the star of the show, <laughs> Monica Perez. You're so funny. Hi. Hi, Clint. Hi. I, I posted that I was going to go live, uh, you know, because we do every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And uh, your friend, JJ Boogie, responded, are you ready? It's like, no, I'm, not, I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. I mean. Yep. Buckle you know. up. Buckle your seatbelt, Clint. <laughs> well. So a friend of mine from Sweden just texted me that she made a cocktail from MonicaMixes.com, which is my cocktail blog. And. I told her and her man, whom we call Sven, even though he has like a different Swedish name, but they're all the same. Anyway, so I told her to plug in and they're plugged in so we can talk about Sweden and hopefully they'll be able to chat. And talk about, and what's his, what's his name? Her name is Jessica and his name is Sven. Sven. It's not really Sven, but That's we just call him Sven. Hey, I found out something pretty cool. The other last week, uh, let's see, what was it? Last week, almost 20% of my, no, 18% of my downloads came from Ireland. Really? Wow. I thought that was pretty cool. Could it be that because I'm a, a citizen of Ireland? They know that I'm, I'm the Irish one here. I don't think so, but it's okay. You just got citizenship. I don't know about bloodline. <laughs> normally I have bloodline. an, I, normally I have an Irish flag behind me too. So. I'm half Irish. Half. Can you believe it? But yeah. I'm a quarter some despised ethnicity that I cannot tell you. We are all mixes. I've told this before. There are very few, very few That's true. pure you bloodlines. And adopt it. You are uh, actually Native American, despite your lack of Native American blood. You're I, I, culturally Native American. We are, we are just a little bit of everything now. That's why I love people when they get into this, you know, if you really meet a true racist, like mm -hmm. somebody that's all built into racism stuff, I kind of giggle because I think, look, I don't know if you really want to do that mm -hmm. gene genealogy tree because... Do you know I did the freaking gene thing, the 23andMe gene thing? Could you... I don't know if you... You gave your, gen you gave your DNA to people? You know, you know, what? it was a long time ago and, and uh, there was like, a, there's an, my father had a weird heart problem and I wanted to see if I had it. So I did that. It was so stupid. And uh, so I'm a little bit Neanderthal. I think my Swedish friends are a lot of bit Neanderthal. No, that's not an insult. Sure it is. Oh, so they think it's fun. They're ha having a good time. Hey, look, we got... Uh, it's not an insult. I love being Neanderthal. There we go. It's awesome. Franny, can you see Franny's comment? Yes. Hi, Jessica and Sven. His name is Joaquin. And look at there. Think, but I always pronounce it, hey, Daryl. I always pronounce his name wrong, so he's better off with me just calling him Sven. And I'm assuming Daryl oh. meant hi, Monica, and Clint. Yeah. I, I, I pulled it off. My background doesn't look good. Your background looks great. Isn't it cool? It's, it's very, very cool. It's very, uh, it's, it's my, sh I call it my champagne background. <laughs> it looks like somebody ought to pull it aside and Johnny Carson could, should come Oh, yeah. Through. That's perfect. Da, 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 da. <laughs> And I, I do want to be the Tony Randall to anyone's Johnny Carson. Like, so whenever a guest canceled, Tony Randall, who I guess lived near there, would, would just zip over and yeah. be the guest. So anytime, like, your guest cancels, just call me. I want to be Tony Randall. Uh, and hey, thank you, Daryl Jackson. I was a little hard. It was okay. I'm very sensitive. But thank you for saying, hey, Clint. That makes me feel better. Hey, uh, all right. So I, I this week, I sent you some stuff through Twitter. We're going to cover your Twitter. Account. Yes, yes. No hurry, but because I didn't look at it. <laughs> i'm sorry but i'm the one who tweeted it so i should but i we have to cover the one about sweden because my friends from sweden are here having cocktails because it's cocktail hour in sweden and that makes my mouth water that makes Plus, i'm on a diet so i'm not really cocktailing outside of the cocktail parties that are part of my patreon crowd well, well now you might as well tell everybody we're I five know. minutes into it tell her what, what's a patreon yeah. party What's that? So I'm, I have a podcast called The Propaganda Report, Drive Time News Blast. You can find it on any podcasting platform. But if you want more than just a daily show, it's 30 minutes every day of the news of the day from a perspective of truth, liberty, and justice. But every day you can get 15 minutes more of that commercial free if you're a patron. So go to patreon.com slash propaganda report. But if you go up the levels, every additional tier gets you a party or other event. And ultimately, if you're at the highest tier patron saint, twice a month, we do a 90 minute cocktail party at eight o'clock Eastern on Fridays. 
And it's super, super fun. So it's my co-host Binkley and I do what you and I are doing. And the chat is where all the action is. People like it's usually it's well over a hundred people and we just have a great time. Everybody's coming from the same perspective, trying to find some sanity in the uh, COVID mania world. And it's just a blast. Hey, you're going to love what I'm about to do, Monica. I'm I about to, am gonna yeah, love I'm it. about to disappear right here for one second mm -hmm. because guess who forgot to plug in their computer? Yikes. Oh, I thought you were going to pull up some cool graphic that you just did on the fly no. for my patrons. I told my patrons to come watch us today, but I can't there, see the okay. chat. We can't see the chat again? Last week, we I could can't see, see the chat. I Last can't week, we, it came back. This week, it's gone. Uh, <clears throat> how are you liking podcasting? Because I asked you this before we came on the air. Are you, are you liking it better? Yeah, I really like it. I love doing this show. I, the daily show, it really, now that I'm really in the rhythm of it, it's like uh, doing crossword puzzles or cracking a code every day. It's a little, it's, it's a little too much like uh, time-wise, because it takes me, really takes me because I do a lot of interacting with people who inform me and come up with ideas on Twitter. That really helps a lot. And I'm constantly scanning the news and then I have to do real prep and recording. So it's at least five hours a day just for what it's ultimately 45 minutes. Uh, so it's a lot of work. And, I, and with the COVID thing, I don't have any help help with my special kid or anything. So it's right. too, a little, it's a little hard to juggle. And I had to kind of cut back on the cocktails because I was getting fat, but uh, it's, it's in itself, it's fun. Like if I didn't have a lot of other responsibilities, I would just adore it. Well, and I get along great it, with Binkley. Binkley's fun. Well, have you found that it's, is it kind of like radio or is it different, better? What's oh, so much better. Oh, I was even thinking today, normally like every Saturday for eight and a half years, I had a radio show and I would just literally be sick with with just nerves every single time. And the amount of work, I would start prepping on Thursday for a three hour show on Saturday because it was a call-in show and people would be hostile. So you had to be not only ready with what you wanted to share with people, but to, to be ready for what people who are hostile towards you, whether it's from the left or the right, because I'm a libertarian, were gonna throw it at me and they would pull stuff out of the news. So I would have to read all the, I would read Wall Street Journal cover to cover and I would listen to Rush and Hannity just to see what the right wing propaganda was. And it was just exhausting. And well, not that satisfying because I like the lovers, not the haters. <laughs> yeah, just keep moving. <laughs> That makes, there's so many different things I want to say with my sarcastic brain right now. Uh -huh. Hey, look what uh, I think JJ Boogie jumped in there. Yeah. No sanity. No sanity. No sanity whatsoever. All right. Did you happen, though, to see the article I sent you? It was the last thing I sent you on Twitter. Did you see that Which article? Which one was it? It was the very last thing I sent you via your Twitter account. It was actually a link to a news article about uh, the. Um, you know, Jackson, hey, Clint, what do you it's think about it? Bill Bride local zoning for housing development before lawmakers. Is that really? I it, This isn't what I sent you. Bill to no. override local zoning for housing development before lawmakers again. That's what you sent me. Well, I did, but that I'm was- I'm happy all, to talk about that. Well, there was just a bigger article. I think oh, it came out. Huh? I see the chat. Oh, good. It came up then. Good, good, good. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, Kamala Harris here in just a minute. Um but there was a bill that basically took the zoning out of local authorities' hands and gave it to the federal government so then they could put in different, you know, either low-income low income housing or more densely populated housing out in the suburbs. And immediately when I read that, first of all, I was like, that is, this is what happens, though, if you like five things the government does that's big government, and then they do something like this. That's why you got to have checks and balances with the people, we the people. And it just seems like that is scary when it takes local zoning out of your hands. I'll tell you, I don't believe in zoning laws at all. And I'll tell you why. It, the reason you need zoning laws is that the government manipulates investment. It gives real estate tax deductions. It gives interest rate tax deductions. It builds roads. So all of those things subsidize 
building that in an organic free market where people would weigh the values of things and how much they cost, they would have to take into account how much it would cost to build a road, how much it would cost to get financing, how much money you have after taxes to make that investment or or competing with other uh, tax proof investments. <clears throat> and then you wouldn't have these incentives to go in and tear down perfectly good buildings and build other buildings. So the zoning is a function of stimulus. Right. In all so, its forms. So you're just, you just disagree with zoning period, not just yes. this part of it. Yeah. And I can, I can, I can get to the nitty gritty about the policy if you want. And in this no? case, okay. this goes hand in hand with what I've been seeing about two things that are happening now that I see what's going on in LA and New York. There is a, there, the cities are emptying out. And I think there, that's intentional. And there are two reasons for it. One is there, it's a diaspora. So they're taking the very, very big cities and they're sending all these brainwashed blue people into the smaller cities. And just by sheer numbers, any city that's kind of borderline red or blue or state or whatever, if it gets an influx, even 1% of one of those big cities is still going to be, it flips. Be a million. Yeah. So they, so it, it, so LA and New York will stay blue. But all the places that attract the diaspora will flip. In the meanwhile, in those big cities, they can start doing green infrastructure projects. They can start bringing in more you know, driverless cars or whatever they've been after that is hmm. going to be a radical change. So they'll take five years or whatever, and they'll do that. And then all it'll take is a jobs boom or whatever to get everybody back in there. And then there's two more things that I think have come from this. One is they're just going to destroy rural America. They're already destroying it by making everybody have to do everything virtually, by making it impossible for little independent groceries or um, or farms or whatever to live up to regulations or compete with these highly subsidized big box stores, uh, you know, now in the world of Fed money and stimulus and monetary and fiscal stimulus getting funneled to the big guys, the little guys in rural areas, whatever, anything independent is going to be crushed, all that stuff. And then another wrinkle that somebody pointed out to me, and it's probably true, is that the big guys, the rich guys, the guys with an in the government connected rich who know what's coming, who are because when policy makes changes, you can some people know in advance, they could know that there is going to be a decline in real estate values in these cities, but that the comeback is planned. So it is possible that when all the real estate values just bottom out in LA and New York, you're gonna get these guys coming in and scooping it up. And then again, you have this another wave of everybody renting and but I, being unaffordable. But I also think when you said everybody will, a lot of people will come back. I don't know if it's even people coming back. I think it'll be a younger generation coming in Maybe. and they'll create a new, with more money. I mean, because if they, if they build the cities the way they want them and there's all these incentives and the property values will, which have been lowered, start rising again. If it's younger people, they'll be more, they'll have more money. So now I've got the blue out in the suburbs and now I've got the blue in the inner cities. It's kind of the best of both worlds. And you've got a good point in that if it is going to be the brave new world in the cities, if it is going to be green stuff, sustainable stuff, these nicheless buildings, the total surveillance all the time, all the stuff that this generation is being bred to not even notice, yeah. then they won't mind coming into these cookie cutter so-called sustainable cities. It won't annoy them. Feel free to monitor myself. I, it'll be, a, it'll be people that have just, that are, there's no, dis, there will be fewer dissenting voices. So yeah, well, this crowd plugged in, they're just this iGen and the dumbing down of America combines to people not noticing. And then you get everybody addicted to creature comforts or really addicted to things, the dopamine. Uh, well, that's what I say. I say we're just now a lot of us willing to give up stuff because of convenience. I, it's, I know I have. Yes, I agree. I agree. That's, um, what that's what we've been trained to do. And that's what we have to do because we can't do anything for ourselves. I can, I've got a little, I got enough room back here to build a garden where I could feed myself. Oh, do and two, oh, I yeah. don't, I don't even got, own my house. I'm renting this house. Yeah, but I'm renting it with, yeah, I can, I can, I can still do a garden. Yeah, now. yeah. Uh, Daryl Jackson, Clint, what do you think about Joe Biden's VP, Kamala Harris? Uh, I have said this now for months, 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 and months that I don't oh, think Biden, yeah. I don't think Biden's going to be the guy anyway. So now that she's on board and everybody keeps calling her a moderate, she's not a moderate at all. Zero moderate. She's not even close to a moderate. 
I have a strange feeling that over the next two or three months as we get closer, he will end up, whether you think he's, because you think he's acting a lot, I think it's actually genuine dementia that's setting in. And it makes me kind of sad. Either way, it doesn't matter. I think yeah. he's going to take a lesser role. She will end up driving it. I think she could either actually become the nominee where he could step out. And then all of a sudden, she'll fill the vacuum with a... Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams. Fill in the vacuum with the Michelle Obama, a Hillary Clinton. Uh, insert whoever will Beto. make it. Beto. Some, some box to check. Yeah. I don't some, think she's a very like good. deep state. Well, yeah, but here's why. Because as the ticket sits right now, it's not an attractive ticket. I mean, she, there's not a lot of, there's a lot of Democrats Although literally, that don't she's like quite her. pretty. Yeah. She's really good. Well, she's and she's super smart. My my issue comes oh, yeah. from That's there's true. actually people That's in the Democratic true. Party that do not like her. And well, well, so. in the year of the anti-cop to pick a cop, it seems like a lose on purpose move. He is so not he is I mean, literally I, I I've never seen a candidate that gets more defense in the national news. When, when reality is, if that was anybody else, even people in the, if it was another Democrat saying the things that he is saying would get totally hammered. But for some reason, everybody is going along the play sheet, the playbook of run defense, you know, run interference for, for Uncle Joe. And then as far as the mail-in votes, because uh, mail-in ballots, Daryl asked what we think about mail-in ballots. Monica, what do you think about that? And then I'll give my two cents worth. I think with, I actually think that the mail-in ballots, if if the infrastructure were set up for it, if you actually did it correctly, I think it would be superior because you would have a paper trail. But it, with all voting integrity, so do you disagree also with absentee ballots, Clint? Well, no, but it's not, it's not just, it's, they can handle that because it's not in bulk and there's a big window of time. So but I if just they don't... could handle it, would can't. you have an objection to mail? Well, here's what here's my issue with the the oh, mail-in yeah. ballots. For the last thirty or forty years, if you can name me a comedian, especially I go back to growing up with my grandpa, who made fun of the post office because they were inept a lot of times. Yes, yes. The so, the, the fact that it's a federal that it was what I was going to say. That yeah. The problem is that it actually de facto federalizes the election process. So. Um, what I absolutely, one thing I would never, ever allow is vote harvesting, like where people can come collect the ballot. I would absolutely never, ever allow that. But you know that's going to happen because it's happened in the past. And my issue comes from, again, it's not the people that work in government that bother me because I think a lot of good people work in government, especially on the lower level. I know a lot of people in it. It's the system. And, and, the, and the people have made fun of the post office not doing his job. That's why FedEx and UPS, I mean, th that's why they... Do you mind that a lot of undocumented people, illegal immigrants vote in California? Does that yes. bother you? Yeah. You don't like that? <laughs> no, I don't think Actually, if you're not, if you're not a citizen of the United States, I don't think you should vote. I, to tell you the truth, I don't... I think it's just California wasting its electoral votes, although it gets them... I'll have to think about it. Uh, the census does not count them, which means that no, the census does count them. Oh, I can't remember now. Anyway, I think you should have to have an ID, and I think you should have to. Be I an agree American with citizen. that. I I absolutely agree with that. I agree with all of that. But I'm just saying the states also the U.S. Post Office isn't really any more of a problem than the DMV of any state. I agree. Yeah. So so I just like the election process is really subject to a lot of fraud and malfeasance. Brian Kemp is a perfect example. I mean, he destroyed mm -hmm. the evidence of the bad 2016 election that he oversaw and Stacey Abrams didn't call him out on it. So I think they're that they're both in league oh, with the same people. Yes. But they but what you need is a paper ballot system that is auditable. I don't right. care really how you do it, but mail in voting would be fine if you could do the barcode with a tracker. So that, I mean, you know, it's only one person. I, you know, yeah. it's just, well, there it's is, gonna happen there is a way. I mean, they did absentee voting. You just need a lot of time. But the absentee voting is a, is a percentage compared to what mail. So what? Well, 
Well, I mean, because they can't you don't handle think the it tonnage. Can scale? No, I don't think Why it not? could scale. Well, because if it could scale, you wouldn't have FedEx and UPS taking as big a pie out of the postal service, which is actually getting less money. And like I said, has been the brunt of jokes because they can't do their job super efficiently. Yeah, and, all of that. But yeah. but they it's, have gone. They've their volume has plummeted since they've gotten that kind of competition and from email and stuff. I mean, it's. And they still I think it. it's totally possible if you if you object if you don't object to absentee ballots because absentee ballots you're just saying well there's that much that goes wrong in the system but it's just a small percentage like for me I want every vote to be legitimate every vote I do to too my, my issue comes from it can't be everybody's been wanting mail in votes this year you're gonna have to take no, a this time. year no. You're going to take time and build it. And here's why. Because no, if, if an elevator can only handle 2,500 pounds and you put 5,000 pounds on it, it can't do it. Yeah. So you're going to have to build Plus it. Plus, it's, it's being sabotaged from all directions. Uh, the left and the right want to set this up to be an illegitimate election. Uh, any ticket is attractive from the left that is not Trump. Yeah. Did you, no, see, that, so did you see that Biden survey? No. So they did a survey that's supposed to be, you know, apolitical, not really biased, but they gave all the reasons people were voting um, against Trump or for or against Trump. Mm -hmm. And it had a mm -hmm. bunch of them. But for Biden, it was like 50 percent or more were voting for Biden because it was not Trump. <laughs> but that's the way it was with Hillary, too. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point. That's the lesser of two evils thing. That's why it's such a sham. That's it's why they're going to have to the have Michelle Obama. And the whole, I mean, let's just come right down to it. The whole purpose of voting is to get the sanction of the victim, to quote an Ayn Rand chapter heading, the sanction of the victim. It's just to, so that we think, so we submit and acquiesce to this tyranny because we're told that we've decided as a group. But we I don't even it. know why you care. You're going to be on your big farm with water from rainfall. No. You're not even going to be, you're going to be off the grid in 10 years. You're not even going to. I don't know. Apparently I'm not the only person in my household with a vote on this. What? I it thought you had a, I that thought I'm you were the, a dictator. The, the only one who, who's, who's going to man the shovel and dig the bunker. I think yeah. other people are just waiting, waiting. Waiting hey. for us to go back to the way it was before. Uh, J.C. Groves voting in 2020 is going to be like the Mormon church baptizing for the dead. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Come on. Okay. I know you do, Clint. Well, Jay, here's the other thing. And I want to bring up J.C. real quick. This is the guy, Monica, I was telling you that does the big podcast, the, fund oh, the Recovering Fundamentalist. Interesting. I really wanted to hear about that. So J.C. And, and he's got two other buddies, Nathan, and I cannot remember the third pastor's name. <clears throat> if you're listening to this and you love... A little controversy, great information, good conversation. Go check out the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast. I'm telling you right now, they get not just a few thousand, tens and tens of thousands of downloads every episode. How, the, how old is the podcast? Less than, I mean, six months, maybe. Wow. And they've got there like half a million. must have been a real demand for that. And they, of course, must do a great job. They do. And and I'll give you the thumbnail sketch of it because it interested you even. Brian, yes, thank you, absolutely. JC. So, thank you, JC. Brian is the third host. So they were raised as a really, really strict fundamentalist Christian background. And I'm talking like the you had to wear long pants. Girls couldn't had to have skirts on. You couldn't you had to have a chaperone if you went on dates up to a certain yeah. age. So now they're all pastors and they're pastors in the Christian faith, but they have kind of sifted through what is man-made and what is biblical and so they're trying to talk about on this podcast so may i ask Yo, you're, yeah. so fundamentalism claims to be bible-based and these guys are saying that they are more bible-based well they're just saying that a lot of times what the fundamentalist claims are biblical are simply man-made and, and, and you know they say okay so the yeah. fundamentalist claim yeah. is biblical and these guys say that it's not correct not everything yeah right yeah so it's it's basically like you know that they'll take something that is a, a rule and they'll say, is that rule come from the Bible? Let's go look at it. Yeah, that's great. It's really I wonder if they stuff. ever read the Jefferson Bible. It's, oh. sure. it's a very short Bible written by Thomas Jefferson where he took out only direct quotations of Jesus. Oh, I don't know. That would yeah, be, I did good. not know that. Yeah, I'll have to go read that. Quite clever. Uh, so yeah, I'll Jason. tell you what is making me insane about the Catholic Church right now. For the first time in my entire life, I've really just, I'm about to give up. It's baptizing someone who's alive for somebody who has already died. Basically a false doctrine. Wow. 
So you're baptized in, in absentia, you're baptizing someone who's already passed in absentia. Can you do that for somebody who's not already passed, but just doesn't want to be there to just doesn't want to be baptized? I don't know. If JC's listening. If someone baptized me in. in effigy somewhere in a Mormon church. I don't know. The, you That's know, so I'm really good at a lot of things and I, I'm actually, you know, I probably could talk religion with you, uh, but I don't know if that can happen or not. My baptism do's and don'ts. I'm a Baptist. So we believe in dunking. Dude, you so. don't know. When I moved to the South, I got a lot of hostility from Baptists. Apparently Baptists and some Lutherans hate Catholics. I never I understood that. I don't, but. I don't understand the hate part of anything when it comes to yeah, the Christian either. faith. But I'll tell you what, can I tell you what is infuriating me about the no. Catholic church right now? Mm -hmm. You don't want to no. hear it? Yeah, of course I want to hear it. That's why I do this every Saturday with you. <laughs> so here's the thing. I, uh, even when I was raised by really, really old school Catholics and they would say, oh, the Masons have infiltrated the church, the, the sex, the, all, all the <clears> stuff that pedophile thing did not surprise them but they always taught me that the church is the people and that you go to the church even a bad priest even a, a broken down sinful priest can still give you the sacraments and only the priest can give you the sacraments which is of course what luther said like you don't want the church to have a monopoly on the sacraments but we don't recognize and i don't even think luther put forward that like that's the actual body and blood of christ but that's why you go to church how bad the church gets doesn't matter at all but you have to have the sacraments, you have to have mass and stuff to be in communion with God, because not because you go to hell if you don't do all the rules, it's because you don't, you can't get to heaven if you don't know God because you need to love God, right? I'm not telling you that I am like, I'm telling you this is how it is. I'm telling you this is the Catholic stuff I was taught. Right. So so now, so the, the church can co coexist with the state as long as the state doesn't interfere with the fundamental morals of the church. Otherwise, the church has to push back. And the most important thing for the church is supposed to be that our souls are saved. And my mother would go nuts when Pope Francis would talk about the climate and all this kind of stuff. She said, what does he care about that stuff? It's just about, like Mother Teresa had it right. It's just about saving souls. Or um, spiritual comfort, I think, was kind of her direction. But it wasn't material comfort. Anyway, so now the church has allowed the state to deny us mass and communion in the name of earthly health, physical health, which if we're about, so the only thing that the church needs to do is provide the sacraments and it's not doing it. And it's doing it because we're all facing death, which is the one time it should not do it. it should, if everybody's about to die, you need to be in the state of grace and just dispensing with it. Like the Pope says he has, doesn't, gave you a default closeness. It, 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 it separates you from God. And it's really, to me, like, that's like it for the church. I mean, I'm not ready to leave, but I could become Russian Orthodox. That's the only thing you're allowed to Come become. to be a Baptist. I'll tell you about all the good stuff. I can't do. because yeah, well, I've got that indoctrination. The only thing I'm allowed to turn to is Russian Orthodoxy. Could you by some chance though, have a peaceful protest at your church? Well, I outside? asked my priest to please start giving mass and communion underground. Well, just do it outside, line everybody, and oh, we're just peacefully protesting. That's what you could do. Uh, no, by the I way, need mass. This is from JC. That's why they own Ancestry. Who owns Ancestry.com? I th thought Sergey Brins. Oh no, that's twenty three in me. Maybe he's talking. I think is the Mormons. I don't know. Oh, JC, you'll wow. have to answer that. JC, you can't throw something out there like that and then walk he's off. Gonna... Daryl, what do you agree? So, oh, you agree with? I think he's agreeing with the what, what you were yeah, just saying about the church. Oh. Uh, well, I don't know, because he just commented what we're, what we're talking about currently. But even though I'm right about Kamala Harris and I'm right about mm -hmm. Joe Biden not being the he guy, I'm right about a lot of stuff today. I feel like I'm really right a lot today. Wow, that's great, Clint. That's I think great. we People should stop now. That. No, People they love won't. That. So maybe I should just become a Trumpian because you're just going <laughs> to convince me. Yes. Uh, Baptist born, Baptist bred. When I die, I'll be Baptist dead. And that ain't y'all's. <laughs> Ain't that what y'all say, Clint? Maybe. Is that true? I, I don't know. It is now, now that he said JJ's it. JJ's gonna... a Georgian, so he probably oh, yeah. has his fair share of the Baptist doctrine. Oh, but he, I think, is of yeah. Catholic descent, if not actual Catholic. Well, you know, and we've talked about this in government all the time, but it's true in any organization. It's true in college. It's true in whatever your uh, favorite football team or sports team is. It's true in politics. It's true in religion. 
when you get human beings and start handing a bunch of power to people, you're going to have a lot of good people that get in charge. And all it takes is a few people that are just rotten to the core to give a bad reputation to everybody involved. So it, it uh, you know, us humans giving other humans power and then expecting them to not be human or not keeping an eye on them because we know they're human, just giving people power and then going, well, I trust them to always make the right decision. That's just silly too, because humans make bad decisions well, all but, the time. I mean, this is the thing. I, I've always looked as far as the popes go, and there's not supposed to be human in this regard. They're supposed to be infallible when it comes to morality, matters of faith and morals. And I would say this is absolutely one of those because it's essentially moral. But I had looked before to see if any pope had ever advocated the forcible redistribution of wealth, which would be stealing and ultimately killing. And it's just not permitted. And I never, ever found an example of it before Pope Francis. And this too is, I'm guessing, unprecedented. Is her, is her name Kamala? It's Kamala. Yeah. Kamala Harris. <laughs> but even Joe Biden messed it up and called her uh, Kamala. In the same sentence as he called her Kamala or whatever. It was when I he know. was but, asking her to See, be but that's the thing. So Binkley, my co-host, said one day, oh, you're an idiot or a racist or whatever if you say her name wrong. The next day, like that was the meme that was being promoted. Oh, okay. The next day I was like, oh, I heard Biden broadcast on Fox. They didn't mention it or anything, but everybody noticed that he said her name wrong. And I mean, that's a setup. That's a setup. That is not a guy with Alzheimer's. That's a guy well, who's scripted. Well, and I'll tell you the one thing that has frustrated me already to no end, and it's 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 not like just happened. It's been going on forever. But as soon as we, as soon as she's chosen, and we start talking about the ideas, we don't like her policies. Everybody, you know, there's a group of people now that say if you badmouth her, you don't like women, or you're against women of color. Yeah. And I'm like. I actually had this on another podcast with a friend of mine who's got a, a really good podcast and we are as politically opposite, I would imagine as possible, but it is, if we can't talk about ideas and you're going to say that I'm disagreeing right. with her because of superficial things, then you're silencing good ideas. And that is a, that's a tactic that yes. is, and it's disingenuous. And I think, I think that is evil, but that's just me though. You can't so Janice says you can't legislate morals. Yeah. I I would take that two ways. I totally agree. You cannot legislate morals, but the Pope is supposed to, like it happens very rarely. It's when he speaks ex cathedra. It's probably happened three times in the history of the church. I think like it's very, very rare, but he is responsible in matters of faith and morals to like make a <clears throat> ruling. And Catholics are supposed to abide by it, except for Catholics ultimately must obey their conscience. They must. So like, even though birth control is an absolute no-no in the Catholic church, if you felt it was unconscionable for you to have a child or to deprive your spouse, then you, if you really consulted your conscience, then you would be required to follow your conscience. So morality absolutely is ultimately a function of an informed conscience and see and baptists removed that intermediary so now we just go straight to god we just talk directly to him and hopefully but it's he so but I, I you know i think about that people are like oh that's an easy shot you can take it catholics but no no they, that's it's just quite the way it complicated is. you know if you if you try to interpret i like the bible i you know it's i get it but it is possible that there are nuances that it takes many lifetimes to really get to the bottom of and why not listen to what saint thomas aquinas says or saint augustine Nothing wrong here, with that. Here, I will know exactly everything I'm supposed to know at the moment of my death. And if I can come back and tell you, Monica, I will. Because on That's the other side. a little late, isn't it? It is. But on the other side of this veil, we all will know everything and we'll go, we had. We're trying to get ahead of that. Yes, we are. Look, I'm we... not really. I, I, I'm I, like my mom. She said when she was 19. So I'm still thinking about these questions, but not really. I stopped about 10 years ago. But my mom said when she was 19, she just decided it was a it was a better way to live. So I, I don't worry too much. Impression. Yes, I don't worry too much about you know the intellectual stuff. That's for you. You do that. But I just think it's a better way to live. And you know she was right. So it took me like twenty years longer to think of that she was right about that. And it is just a better way to live. And I really don't know the nuances. I can't think of another. You know, until somebody tells me that the alternative to God is I, is something other than I have no idea. I'm going with like, that's a plausible, I don't know. I just, it is a better this. way to live. But we've talked about this too. She said, we need to not meet in the middle. I agree. Thank you. But 
I also agree, whether it's science, whether it's faith, it's religion, at some point, we know so much and we, yet we know so little that at some point, faith is going to come into play. See, I don't even believe that. Either, I think, some way. I think, I think it all points to, I think this real science points to something absolutely unexplainable within the But that's the what system. I'm saying. If you walk science It's not faith. I don't have faith. Oh. It just seems like the most logical answer. You just have to have, there's a leap that we make from where we, we get to the limit of what we know and we yes. don't know this yes. gap and we have to go. It just happened. Well, that's called faith. <laughs> I don't do that. And I'll tell you, like, this is, it's very interesting that you're doing this to me because, or like, you're leading me down this thought process because I don't do that and I won't do that. And it's occurred to me to do that. Like, I've, I've prayed on my knees, like, please just like, let me totally give myself over. And the answer came to me once. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is do it. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not doing that. But as a Catholic, I get to just practice. It's enough to just practice. You don't see it's the, that's what's very different between like you have to, it's the exact opposite from the, all you have to do is believe. All you have to do is practice. I think you kind of have to believe, but, but I think there's a, I think it's impossible. a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of faith and there's a lot of habits you have to have in, in, in practice. Yes. I will say Even this. Even yoga will say it's a, you know, they say it's a practice and it is. Yeah. And that's why I have to go to mass. And that's why those MFers are effing me. <laughs> well, and that's why I do box breathing every morning where I do my breathing techniques. That's it's a not habit. Mass. That's not no, mass. <laughs> no, but it's me praying. That's how it's when I pray to my God. I pray when I do the dishes and a lot of other things. I just like, thank God I have the the strength and fingers to do the dishes. I it's think fun. our fan base as small as it is and growing <laughs> by the week. I think our fans and your viewers would love if I did a podcast with you. And the only, t only response you gave, give me your answers, but you have to give them to me like your mother would. <laughs> Actually the hidden friend who is my sister she, I, my mother's probably watching right now. I don't know if she can figure out Facebook, but but she definitely can't figure out the chat. I'll tell you that right now. But we can have actual mommy. No, I, I, whatever. I just would like you to ask you these same. Mommy made a cameo on one of my cocktail parties recently. Did I tell you this last week? Uh -huh. Yes, where she, where I said, hi. so so we flashed her up on the screen while people were still watching. My mom, who's 91. And I was like, mom, you know, modern technology. She's probably like being broadcast. You must think that's cool. Mom, she's a very cheerful person. Mom, how'd you like it? And she just sat there like this. Nice language. <laughs> That's a mom. So I guess I was using vulgarity. I'm like, mom, come on. In the first century, In faith and belief were synonyms with um, obedience. Oh, Anonymous. So the first century of the 21st or whatever, the 21st century as well, JJ. Think about it, right? Science is faith, is obedience. These masks are bull. There's no science behind that. I can tell you the CDC has published a survey of 10 random controlled studies, trials that shows that there, for at least for the flu, masks, even hand washing does not prevent respiratory illness. I'm my, telling you. My daughter so came home faith from her first day. Obedience. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. My bad. No, it's my bad. It's I never stopped good. talking, so there's your only hope is to jam it in there. Jump in there. Well, she came home from her first day, and I don't get to see her that much, and it, you know, because of COVID right now. But I, I go by her the house. I, I see her as often as I can, two or three days a week. But I got to pick her up from her first day of school, which was a half a day. And she gets in the car. She had only been at school for half a day. Her breathing was labored. She had her face had broken out. She'd had the mask oh. on at school all day. Oh, and and she's like, thing. she's like how we're going to do this all year. It's Dad. so unhealthy. They're not, I, they're going to take yeah. them out of school. Yeah. I think they will. It's too. so unhealthy. The mask is what causes hypoxia. Hypoxia gets them to jam a ventilator down your throat and then you die. And that's the problem we have right now. My son at got least, sick from having to wear a mask at work all the time. Yeah. It's, and I actually have now concluded that <clears> they're <throat> having us do it because it makes us sick because they need people to be sick for the psyop to continue. You froze up a little bit. So yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, you froze up. Oh, sorry. We can't hear you. I don't know you. why I'm not listening to Monica. Monica, so what? What? I, I want everybody. As I said that, I was like, oh, this is going to get Clint in trouble. I better I want, stop I want Big Brother like to that. know that I have faith and still believe in science. 
and whatever they want despite me despite the evidence leave my very frail life alone mm -hmm. i'm on the threshold Sorry, hey then you should not be hanging out with me i mean i'm not it's not that let's do some twitter stuff you want to sure all right so i sent you one and it and i think we actually talked about it but maybe maybe no we didn't sweden no they didn't they planned it the sweden okay. herd immunity okay so i hope jessica is still there watching with sven uh although she said that there's a lag because she's actually in sweden but my so it's it's saying that Sweden accidentally stumbled into herd immunity by not completely shutting everybody down. So they had a bit of a spike in deaths, no more than New York City, much less if I had to guess. My, I think there's nobody had more than New York. And now they seem to be through it. They're not going to get another phase, whatever. But the idea that it was an accident or they stumbled into it is ridiculous. It was their expectation. It's what they were after. It's what they achieved. It was foreseeable. It was much better founded in any kind of evidence-based science than, than what the rest of the world did, which was unprecedented, illogical, and unfounded. Never before have well people been quarantined. Sweden rightly did the opposite. Going back to your Twitter account at Monica Perez show, Stacey Abrams could have as much impact on the 2020 as Kamala Harris. I know we talked a little bit about this, but what do you specifically mean? And what did that, this article from the Washington Post mean? What I should have said, and they didn't really go into it. And my, and what I should have said in my comment on the tweet would, should have been only if they lose because Stacey Abrams is a loser. She's a, the king of the losers. She's a born loser. She's there to lose, to be the victim, to be oppressed, to be angry. And she uh, runs this fair fight thing. She doesn't accept, or she claims that she doesn't accept the Georgia thing. But if you, I did a special report with Binkley on propaganda report on Stacey Abrams and her backstory and the amazing, internship she's done for the State Department, for Yukos Oil and the Kissingers, for the Marshall Fund, for the Salzburg Fund, for every, for the British American Project, for every deep state international organization out there, she has done an internship for it. She is there to, to reshape the world through this PSYOP, which is her persona. And, and when the Democrats lose, she will lead the charge in using race likely as a way to federalize the election, just like race is being used as a way to federalize the police. And she's, her role is going to be if they lose. She's going to lead that charge. Yeah. She's going to be the leader of the opposition. JJ Boogie said, 76 year old libertarian thinker, Gene, and I should get my glasses are right there. Gene Epstein, Epstein, I'm sorry, claims based on his research that New York City has already reached herd immunity. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, I it went through. It went through all the older population like wildfire. They killed everybody. Because they kept, he kept sending them back to the nursing homes. That's not really what killed them. Well, that uh, might have. I but do was. you know that Journal of American Medical Association, the JAMA article uh, was, did I tell you about that? About the percentage of people in New York over 65 who, are, who died on ventilators? Mm -mm. So they had people over 65 who tested positive for COVID. Of the ones who were put on a ventilator, 97.2% of the people died within the first few weeks. That means just about everybody. If they're picking you to go on a ventilator or if they're putting you on a ventilator, you are absolutely guaranteed to die. And of the group they did not put on ventilators, maybe they weren't as sick, whatever, only 26% of the people died. Now, statistically, that cannot mean that they just happened to pick only the people who were going to die, because if they knew who was going to die and they could not save them by putting them on a ventilator, then it would be wrong to put them on a ventilator. Right. So when you know that you're taking a group of people and 100% of them are going to die, do you do not treat them with an expensive and scarce resource. So there's something up with that. They're not investigating anything in, in New York. And I had the reason I investigated it is that I was highly suspicious of the death rates there. And I figured it had to be policy based. When you change policy and you have a negative outcome, it's the fault of the policy. So they have widespread liability protection now that they didn't have before. And they also are not investigating. And I think sometimes when people hear us talk about this, at least me, 
just Clint's opinion is I'm not saying that there's not a real virus and it doesn't really infect people and hurt people. I mean, I actually just had a guy graduated two years older than me, passed away last Friday and relatively well, let me healthy. Let just tell you yeah. what the difference is between there's germ theory, which says that a microbe when introduced into a human host, a healthy host will make that healthy host ill. That's germ theory. Right. That was Louis Pasteur said that he, that he proved and it was absolutely fraudulent, which he admitted later and on his deathbed said, the germ is nothing. The terrain is everything. Terrain theory is if you look at things that break down, bacteria eats it, stuff like that. Microbes eat dying things. Micro microbes eat cells that are sick. So if you have a if you have sick cells and a and a microbe that eats those cells is introduced there, it's not gonna hurt me. I'm super healthy, but it's gonna hurt somebody who's already got sick somehow so, something degenerative something unhealthy there it's terrain yeah. theory so pre-existing conditions yes and or even just being old you know degeneration you can see it in your face it happens yeah. so so to take healthy people and lock them down there's no sense to it whatsoever and the impact of the lockdown actually made it harder to treat those sick people i agree 100 percent. look at this see this comment and then we'll go back to twitter can you read that? Because my eyeballs are just getting... You just pointed at me or you pointed at John. John. John Jasper. Please, we, we need to dialogue on this, buddy. He says the Belarus president allegedly offered uh, almost a billion dollars to follow the script, but refused and is now targeted for... Oh, yes, I agree with you. He was allegedly offered. Not that he offered somebody, but he was offered. Yes, the Belarus president is legit in my Who opinion. offered him? Who offered I don't know who's the, where's the uh, money. We would, uh, he, my idea is that in Belarus, we wanted to get this guy removed. He is now, maybe we drove him to Putin or he was already friendly to Putin the way Ukraine, they just, they make a good deal. That's better from the Russians and we don't like it. We tried to get rid of him. We put in this uh, puppet opposition candidate who got virtually no votes. We've sparked, this is my opinion sparked all sorts of riots over there and we make it look like that guy's illegit and did not win the 80 percent of the vote that he's said to have won and as soon as i looked into the belarus thing i thought it he was uh he was legit and she was full of it but a bit somebody gave him almost a billion dollars i assume it's us yeah when you say Tell follow me the more, script John. yeah you when you say follow the script you're talking about the script on how to handle the coronavirus what script are we talking about? Oh, do about? you think? Yeah, do you think it's the, uh, it must be. Yes, Fran, there are big protests in Belarus. Yeah, I don't know much about that story. So I've got questions like, what script are we talking about? Who okay. offered the yeah. money? But John has to say yeah. what script and who yeah. offered the money. But yeah. in Belarus, they, they had this big election recently. And the person who was put up against him, her, her husband was a YouTuber who was arrested for... Um, provocation or misinformation or whatever. I'm sure he worked for us. And she's now on the run because she's a, a foreign agent. I mean, we are allowed to issue foreign agents, but they're not. What's, we're the good guys. And I, I say that with a hand up. I believe I that because I, I know, you know, I I'm, know, but you're, but you're wrong because there are no <laughs> heroes in the story of international politics. We are the heroes. Our, we have monsters that Only have to fight villains. the bad monsters. No, that's not true. No, we kill innocent people. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I mean, a lot. I, I don't, I don't know any, and show me you a better. Forget, go, I'm from a despised minority. Show, I'm very Show me a better government. That I mean, and whether it's not been show I mean, you a better government. Oh, yeah. Clint. Oh, you're gonna make you love me do that this? One. Are you, you love kidding? that one? We've talked about this. Government, I think, is an I'll tell you right now, our government was better in the past, but I got I proven. I, I speculated the first time you beat me down with that. I started <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought very quickly and in real time that you don't have evidence of the ideal society because it doesn't build monuments to itself. It doesn't and it doesn't fall exist. from the rooftops. It doesn't. It does. It's just smaller and it doesn't leave monuments to the state behind. And I actually have proof of that. If you read against, I the started Green doing Project, a video series. I started doing video series once a week with my buddy Eric Buchanan and John Ballinger about the Constitution, about the the the, the Federalist Paper. We're we're moving through from the start to now on uh, why please and do how. Me one favor. You and you're going to come on as a guest with me and Eric and John. I'm no expert, but just do me one favor. Yeah. When you talk about it. 
the Federalist Papers and the Constitution, please include, I would say, in this order, the Articles of Confederation. We talked anti, about that this week. The Anti-Federalist Papers, which are written by Patrick Henry. And I'm reading those right now. And the single greatest source used, very good, that's big. It the is. Single great, many volumes. The single greatest source used by the founders in drafting the Constitution, which is Vattel's Law of Nations. V-A-T-T-E-L. Vattel's well, Law of Nations. And I don't important. think we learned this back in civics. I learned a lot of this that I just completely forgotten that there were Federalists and there were Anti-Federalists. And the for them to come together and try to work this thing out, there was they big government. Well, they, they Patrick tried. Henry pounded the table. Do not, do not uh, bring this constitutional. But they uh, did. Coup. But they, did. they didn't come together. Patrick they Henry well, he fought did. till the end. All right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Here we go. JJ. And, and now yeah, the had, yeah. FBI is hoping to investigate the Lebanon explosion. I think Clint, that was arson. Clint, yeah, uh, Clinton needs to read "Democracy That God," the that God failed. that failed. That's Hans Hermann Hoppe. He's a he's a the quintessential anarcho capitalist. As long as y'all don't get me going down the road of that, those commies. No, I'll just say that out loud. Uh, no, going no, back no, to no. your Twitter account until somebody fascists else. are commies too, Clint. So you oh, got to avoid uh, the Marxist, entire spectrum fascist, of, them, yeah. of what's happening here in this country right now. Uh, here's for Monica Perez at Monica Perez show on our Twitter account. Go follow her. Notice clear skies since the beginning of the internment solar radiation management clearly on hold. Then saw this from the folks who brought you event two hundred one. I can do that. Oh, did I bring my books back? I don't have the book anymore, but I remember it. So uh, I noticed that they stopped spraying this in the sky and they had to. Because what did they, they spray sp with? They spray. Um, I had I had my flight tracker up for a while and is I think it with it's planes? Airplanes, yeah. Okay. It's real airplanes. Like I'm FedEx. I saw one was FedEx. One was um, a Japanese airline. But I only started looking at it after the or after the lockdown. So it used to be just t constant, basically. And I noticed that it stops, especially as air traffic diminished. And I thought, well, there's they they used to. They don't admit it. You can look up solar radiation management and they explain in great detail what they're doing. Only they say they're not doing it, but you can see that they're doing it. So assuming that they are doing it because you can see it with your own eyes and it matches their description, I wondered how, I mean, they're just hell bent for, I mean, for five years, I've noticed it in earnest. They're hell bent on the solar radiation management, pumping it into the atmosphere. And I wondered why why they were okay with suspending that during the corona times and then i read in that fourth industrial revolution book by klaus schwab who founded and runs the world economic forum which gave us event 201 the simulated novel coronavirus yep. he <clears throat> his fourth industrial revolution talks about climate change, it talks about if we started solar radiation management and then stopped it, you would have a rapid rise in temperature. So I think there's a heat wave in this country right now. And if that is true, then doesn't that support the whole climate change narrative? So there's the reason why they might be okay with- So they can point to something, they can point and go- Yeah, they can say yeah. solar radiation management is, is needed because we've got this huge climate problem. Uh, going back to the Monica Perez at the Monica Perez show. Here we go. Just keep in mind that uh, in mid amid the many possible benefits of fresh air and sunlight, they do not relate to germ theory, vitamins, blood, gases, releasing toxins, even reducing stress may be among the benefits. And for there's a Bloomberg.com article. Your oh, old you. radiator yeah. is pandemic fighting weapon. Yes. Yeah, so they were saying that back in the day, they realized how important it was to have fresh air and sunlight following the Spanish flu, I think it was supposedly, mm -hmm. and that they, this gave some benefits to and motive behind selling steam radiators. So, you know, the steam radiators, rather than the forced air, they make noise, they're hot <clears throat> to the touch. Yeah. They just emanate heat and they exchange heat without just pushing hot air into you. And they did it. They said it was super, super hot and it was always under a window. And the idea was that you could keep your windows open and still have a warm room because it was important to have windows open and sunlight because that fights germs. 
So I'm just saying, anytime you see the cause of sickness or the, the cure for sickness or any of that, and they always tack on because germs. And I would say you can interpret almost all of that by saying, what is healthy for you? What is good for your subcellular health? How does your, your body help fight those things? And what are the things that cause disease? Ger uh, germs. Uh, the four things that cause disease are radiation, toxins, stress and malnutrition or poor lifestyle. So if you have toxic gases, like when you wear a mask, you have CO2 gives you acidosis in your urine and stuff like that. If you have toxins like that, you need fresh air to help uh, give you the fresh, the, the gases that you need. You need sunlight for vitamin D. You need all these things to give yourself the health that your then your cells aren't in that degenerative state that makes it a place where microbes come and kind of try to clean it up. So it's not germ theory. Terrain theory fits that explanation equally well. And I, I have yet to run into an argument that doesn't work better with terrain theory than germ theory, or at least as well. Well, and that's one of the reasons, because I used to be a personal trainer a long time ago, and I still work out quite a bit whenever I can. But sweating is such so good for you, not only because it keeps your joints loose and it helps you build muscle, keeps your weight under control, but also sweating out toxins is good for you. That is a way your yes. body gets rid of stuff. It's another way. You know, body another way, a guy won a Nobel Prize for d discovering or proving that a three-day water-only fast totally resets your immune system because it goes in and gobbles up. Oh yeah. All of that bacteria, viruses, whatever viruses are, all that junk in your bloodstream, it just kind of cleans it out. I get super sick if I if I go too long without um I don't know what it is, carbs or I, electrolytes. I can't do it. I get sick. But Well, God shouldn't um, have made cows. I wish I could. If God wanted me to go three days without eating, he wouldn't have made cows. Go check out a podcast called The Holistic Navigator. It's another big one on a podcast platforms. Ed Jones talks about a holistic approach to health along with medicine. But I'm telling you right now, you'll listen to his podcast. He talks about get the germ theory. He talks about all that. He is super smart. The holistic podcast, uh, the holistic navigator. I will say the one thing that I've had been a little disappointed about staying on what you were talking about as far as the health side of this is the lack of voices. I hear a lot of voices locally and regionally, which is great, but a lack of a national attention. And it's starting to happen a little bit where you have healthcare professionals saying, despite coronavirus, put it aside, here is the protocol to living a healthier life because it won't be the last time that we have, you're introduced to something that the body's not had before. So vitamin D, vitamin C, your diet, activity, sunlight, getting bare feet on dirt, hearing the water oh, run. Yeah, that Binkley just told me about that. Seriously, yes, it's yes, a connection between you and Mother Earth. Yes. Listening to a river without the cell phone and traffic around, things like that. John Jasper will know the answer to this, but I, I for years, last probably two, three years, the people have sent me story after story after story about mysterious deaths of naturalists, of holistic doctors, stuff like that. And I really dismissed it because everything I looked into just kind of didn't, like how many? I mean, if there's a million natural doctors in the world, you could probably find one a month who has a death that I can't prove one way or another. So I wasn't totally convinced by that. And similarly with like Jordan Peterson, he just disappeared when he was needed most. And David Crow got cancer and he was dead within a month. These things, I don't know if there's anything to it, but this certainly would be the time when you would want those voices and and we don't have them. It's very lucky for the establishment that those voices are gone. But can I, I, post, yeah, yeah. Can I post some comments real quick and then we'll sure. finish up with your Twitter yeah. account. Uh, this is from Franny. Again. Yeah, David Keith, Geo geoengineering czar. Yeah, he's the Harvard guy. Pusher of solar radiation. He is awful. Yeah, you can look up what solar radiation, SRM, solar radiation management is, and they're doing it. I mean, it's so obvious they're doing it. Keto flu is what they call it, Monica. Happens around the third day when eating a carnivorous diet. Yeah. No, I did get that. I did get that, but that's not what I get. I, I So then I went down to just, I fast 36 hours, but I started to get like this uh, arrhythmia, a heart arrhythmia, just briefly, and I'll never do it again, and I'm never getting that. I am not, there's nothing wrong with my heart. I got it checked out just in case. 
John Jasper posted an article about the Belarus rumor. So oh, we can the go Gateway get that. Pundit, World Bank offered Belarus 940 million coronavirus loan locked destroyed economy. There we go. We'll go read that article. Thank you, John. And so the answers guys. were that. It was yeah. the World Bank and it was about the coronavirus. Wow. Interesting. Gosh, I'm going to start listening to what that guy says. The Belarus president and Putin. Well, Putin's, he's now in league with Putin. So Putin doesn't seem to be countering the narrative. Well, Putin too. wants Trump and Iran and China want Biden. So now, you know, it's almost like people, anyway, whatever. Uh, I know, to, you don't like that. I think that there's even more layers to the chessboard. Than, no, I think not there's quite as many as Q thinks, but. Yeah. Uber CEO says its service will probably shut down temporarily in California if they have to consider drivers all, as employees. That actually combines both of the theories I was talking about earlier about the purpose of the diaspora. The diaspora, they want to chase people out of the city, and that will help do it. I mean, people are just flooding out of L.A. I'm glad I yeah. buy a house. Joe Rogan is leaving California. To Quick interruption. Austin, which is where we were going to go. I don't yeah. want him. You know, Imagine the Joey train Diaz. of L.A. Uh, Joey well, Diaz is leaving, I think, and going back to New Jersey. A lot of the big people are leaving California. That's fine with me, but I just feel like that's what actually it opened up. The, the lack of talent in L.A. is so profound that I played the comedy store last week. <laughs> oh, that's right. Real quick, because we I finished my Twitter account. That was right in Sam hour. Tripoli. And How'd he it go? Just, oh, gosh, I love him. Um, well, Because you were nervous. Yeah, I was. I I spent all of my effort to try not to be nervous, and the problem with that is sometimes you don't have the energy. And like I'm so long winded, that is not his style. So I'm gonna. I hope he gives me another chance to audition as the token chick. But I I did fine. But I would just you know, you need to be. All the girls what? in the audience loved it because I seemed like smart. But but are you you don't like? And we've had this conversation. You're not a big fan of sarcasm. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm a very fan sarcastic. of sarcasm because it's, you know, the cheapest form of wit. We need more. We need more. But I don't know. It was really, really was a fun experience. I Binkley told me it would be fun and it ended up being actually fun. And actually, you can watch it. It's on Sam Tripoli's YouTube channel, his tinfoil hats. I mean, that that the next day it had 35,000 hits. So wow. I'm guessing it's a lot more than that now. I, w I was not knee slappingly hilarious, although I did say things that blow people's minds. Oh, you did? Hold on a second. Sam Tripoli on, on YouTube, right? Yeah, his show, his podcast is called Tinfoil Hats. His comedy thing is called, I'm not going to say it because it's vulgar for your thing. I will if you want me to, but oh. anyway. Hold on. I'm trying to find you Just, real quick. I was trying to find very, your video so I could tell you how many very listeners. very charismatic. When, did, when was it? Saturday. I know it's hard to find. Binkley found it for me. Let's I'll see. tweet it at you. No, I see. Were you sitting at a table? Yeah. Forty-five, uh, over forty-five thousand views so far. It's a lot of views. It is. But, you know, if they're into my ideas, then that's great. But I was not like uh, throwing out one-liners. That's we okay. had fun though. I mean, I had fun, but like I get embarrassed because I'm a girl, so my voice is a little too high and. You just know. talk like your mom. That would have been funny. You could have just Well, talked he's like from you. upstate New York, so he would totally have gotten it. He would have totally gotten it. All right. So I'll go first this week. You can find all my podcasts on Apple or any of your favorite podcast platforms. And just look up During the Break Podcast. And I've got, I think I've released over the last four weeks because I'm releasing them myself now. I think we have released 11 or 12 new episodes. You can also listen to me at dayfirepodcast.com because we talk about adventures in the great outdoors from people all around the country who yes. go all around the world. And then I do one about business, marketingmixradio.com. Now, that's fine for me, but really people come here to find out about you. And I have a Patreon. If you want to help somebody, five or 10 bucks every now and then would help this guy. Took a 40% pay cut so I could use a little help. Now, Monica, you're so, the real you're the mm, real reason. Thank Go. you, sweetie. So if you want to see these episodes from prior weeks, I put them on my YouTube channel, Monica Perez Show. No, it's face it's youtube.com slash Monica Perez. <laughs> and the Propaganda Report, which is my daily show, we do deep dives. We're going to start a channel on Rockfin where we're going to do some exclusive video 
stuff. I'll tell you about that when it actually starts. But in the meanwhile, listen to our daily podcast, me and my co-host, Brad Binkley, on Propaganda Report on your favorite podcasting platform. Uh, the daily show is called the Drive Time News Blast. Because <laughs> you said during the break, I was like, the Drive Time News break? That's not right. <laughs> what? That's it's completely <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I've said that word, that, that phrase, thousands of times. But anyway, there you go. A little brain fart. Yeah. And you can go to patreon.com slash propaganda report for tons of extra goodies and a great value. And stay tuned. Swag is coming soon. Thank you, Daryl, by the way, and everybody yes. that tuned in. Uh, we appreciate that. But you got swag coming soon. Coffee yes, cup. I have. Oh my gosh. So I actually am. I haven't even sent the coffee cups out yet, but I'm already out of them. So I have to reorder them. Any patron saint Anybody who signs up to be a patron saint gets my super awesome, which I forgot again to bring, Propaganda Report mug. I'm going to send you one, Clint, but so it's going to have, have to be out of the second batch. Do you have to buy those and hold, or do you have a company now that holds for no, you and I, I'm just learning what I want best. I would not allow – I wanted to see the quality and everything, so I – ordered 50 of the ones I really, really liked, but it's insanely expensive to ship them, to yeah. pack them. It's a pain in the neck. And I've been like manually inputting people's addresses and stuff. So it's, I have to find a better way, but I just love these exact mugs. So it, I'll never be able to sell that as a profit. That will only be merch for- uh, But there are sale. companies out there that will- that yeah, I'm working on it. I, okay. Yeah, like yeah. discountmugs.com. I just discovered yeah. them yesterday. I have some guy making t-shirts that I think, you know, once I check it out, the quality, I think that'll be something I could. It'll never really make any money. It's just for, just get the word out. People like it. Our logos are super fun and cool. Well, and, and it's love, to give, you know. it's to get, let's be fair. It's, and this is, a, we'll end it on this serious note. It's actually to give people who are supporting your podcast uh, something in return for their money. And here's, That's what, other yeah. than content, but yeah. places like something what, tangible and things like you, what you do, I think are important because we are getting whitewashed so much from whatever side you're on. We do. It's almost impossible not to get in the echo chamber. I, I think this and there's so many voices that agree with me. I think it's good to have voices like you and you're not the only one, but I think it's good to have these pockets and these different places where I can go and be challenged. And when I get done with the video, I have to go. Now, why in the hell do I really believe that? That's a good thing. And I have to say, we do it with humor. I mean, it yeah. can be really freaking depressing. So it is nice that Binkley and I have a lovely rapport, as do you and I. Yes, yes. I love listening to you and Binkley. He's super smart, super funny. With all that being said, we're at 68 minutes. Is that, have they turned the air conditioning off? I'm at home right now, but oh, I have okay. to start going back to the office because the lighting is better. Do I look? No, you look yellow, great today. Pink? You look great. Uh, <laughs> wait, say goodbye like your mother would say goodbye. Let's leave. Oh, Clint, it was so fun. Oh, my gosh. That makes me happy. I don't happy. say, you know, don't take the Lord's name in vain. It's a gosh with SH, you know. Bye, Monica's mom. Bye.